Okay, we're going to go ahead and tackle this problem here in just one second. But I'm saying that 25% uh, will get this right. So I'm curious, do you think you could do this problem? Put your response in the comments section. Now, better yet, if you think you can do this problem, go ahead and pause the video. This might take you about a minute or two to uh, uh, successfully do. And uh, if you want to, go ahead and put your answer in the comments section as well. It'll be uh, uh, interesting to compare notes at the end of this video to see how well you've done. Now, this isn't a perfect exact uh, science in terms of uh, absolutely 25% and only 25% will get this right. But as a math teacher of uh, you know several decades, I could just tell you right now, most students who are learning math, middle school and high school math, are probably going to make an error along the way. So the idea here with this particular problem is to highlight uh, common areas of confusion so you do not make this error. So if you make an error, well, listen, I'm glad you're making it with me, and you know, uh, so you don't make the same. Um, error or have the same misunderstanding when you go to actually take a quiz or a test. So I'm going to get into precisely how to do this problem in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. Uh, but basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra to pre-calculus and everything in between. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level in terms of mathematics, I could help you pass your course. Now, if you're taking any test that has math on it, I'm talking about something like the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, Accuplace, or HiSET, TASC, a teacher certification exam, a uh, CLEP exam, maybe a, a nursing school entrance exam like the TEAS. There is a ton of exams out there that people have to take. And uh, generally speaking, there is a dedicated math section on those exams. So people think that math is pretty important, and it is. I can help you prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, I have a very comprehensive homeschool math curriculum that you might be interested in. And uh, if you don't have math notes, um, listen. I'm just telling you over decades of teaching math, this is one of the most important things you need to be doing to be successful in mathematics. But if you don't have good math notes right now, don't panic. You can use uh, my math notes. I'm going to leave links to my notes in the description of this video. But you really got to start improving this. Uh, you'll thank me later. Okay, so let's get into this problem again. Uh, if you want to go ahead and pause the video and then put your answer into the comment section before you see me do the work, that will be, uh, you know, I think that'll be a good way to interact with this video. But let's get to the solution. All right, now before I can even do this problem, okay, I got to be thinking about this, all right? So what is this? Now, if you know what this means, then that's excellent. But what we're talking about here is the order of operations. Let's go back up to the problem here real quick. So what do I got going on? Well, I have division, multiplication, division, subtraction, uh, multiplication, division. I have a lot of numbers and a lot of different mathematical operators. So in order to manage that, you know, what do I do first? Do I do division, multiplication, addition, subtraction, powers, parentheses? Like, what do I do? Well, this right here tells us what to do, this order of operations this PEMDAS, so uh, the P, okay, it stands for something, the E stands for something, the M and D and A and S stand for something. Now, I am being uh, purposely uh, vague right here because I don't want to, uh, you know, 100% go through this to kind of give you an advantage for you to solve this problem. So some of you are like, well, that's being unfair. Well, no, this is stuff that you should know, okay? And so really, the whole idea behind this video is to test your knowledge uh, current uh, understanding of PEMDAS because typically what I find is that there is some confusion here on how to apply. You know, most students have a, a pretty good idea about this, but they don't understand it fully. And of course, that can get you in trouble when you're doing a particular prompt. So let's get into it now. And uh, here we go. All right. So here is our problem. So let's size up uh, the problem and ask ourselves, what is the first thing we need to do? Well, the first thing we need to do, we need to go to this PEMDAS. So let's start with the P. The P stands for what? It stands for parentheses. So we want to do things that have parentheses, all right? So here's some parentheses, and then I have other parentheses, but really the P stands for grouping symbols. So uh, whether they're parentheses, you can have these little squiggly brackets, you can have uh, square brackets like that. 
Really, the P stands for grouping symbols, but you know you can think of it as parentheses. So we have to look um, uh, at what is inside parentheses. So here, all of this and this, this is like parentheses, right? I have uh, outer parentheses here, but when you're doing, when you're applying this P in PEMDAS, you want to start, you want to start with the in, the most inside parentheses. So that would be these parentheses here. Now, one thing that we uh, want to just kind of observe is that we have a fraction. So this is like a numerator here, right? And this is a denominator right there. Uh, a good way to approach this problem is you could just think of the numerator as its own individual problem and think of the no denominator as its own uh, individual problem. Then once you have the actual answer, okay, to the numerator and the denominator, we can kind of you know, start working within that fraction. So don't try to uh, mix these things up. Just work independent, work the numerator independent of the denominator until you can't go any further and then you can kind of continue on to simplify. All right, so with that being said, uh, this is the uh, inside parentheses. That's what the P stands for. So if you knew that, that's excellent. Now let's move on and, uh, you know, ask ourselves, what do I do next? Well, we got to go to our little PEMDAS and uh, look at this uh, next letter, <clears throat> and that is E. Okay, what does that stand for? It stands for exponents, but basically it means powers. So if I see anything like 2 to the third power, 4 squared, things like that, I'm going to do that next, but I don't see any powers here, so no problem. So what do I do now? Well, here I have division, and here I have multiplication. So now you're looking at M, so what do you think? You think I need to do multiplication next? I'm just curious. Put your uh, response in the comment section. What do you think? Should I do this or should I do this? Okay. Here I have PEMDAS. Should I do the M or the D? Okay. What do you think? Okay. Well, it says M and D. Well, maybe I should do the M first because the M becomes uh, before the D. So M is multiplication. So maybe I should do this part of the problem uh, right here. Okay. Well, this is where a lot of students get confused, and unfortunately, that is incorrect, okay? When we look at the uh, uh, PEMDAS, we have to look at these two groups as M and D and A and S as kind of like one group, okay? This is a group, and this is another group. So it's M or D, multiplication or division, whatever comes first from left to right, okay? Whatever comes first to left to right. I said that twice so you can really understand that. So... Here, again, I'm focused on the inside parenthesis, and here I have division, here I have multiplication. What comes first from left to right? Well, it's division, okay? So I gotta do division, not the multiplication. Now, if I did the multiplication, I would end up with a completely different answer, okay? So here I have to do this first, okay? Most students are gonna be like, oh, six times uh, two, that's 12. So 12 divided by 12, that's one. That's gonna entirely change um, uh, the answer. Okay. So this is a classic misunderstanding of the order of operations. Same thing here with addition and subtraction or whatever, whatever comes first, uh, uh, from left to right. Now, uh, I'm going to give you a chance, okay, to redeem yourself if you made an error. So go ahead and, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, pause the video and you know, redo this problem, okay? Correct this error and then tell me uh, what your answer is. Put that in the comment section. All right, so, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm losing my voice a bit, but that's not going to stop me. We're going to keep plowing forward here. So let's uh, move forward with the next step. So now i got to do this, right, 12 divided by 6 which, of course, is going to be 2. So let's take one step forward. And this is what we're looking at now. Okay, so we have negative 3, 2 times 2. <clears throat> now, let's just make sure you understand. 12 divided by 6 is 2, so that's why I'm putting that 2 there. So that's going to be 2 times 2, and I'm writing the rest of the problem just like this. All right, so, you know, being neat and structured and organized is so important in mathematics. You'll, you, you just can't do math without you know, really practicing being neat. All right, so now uh, we're focused on our inside parentheses still because we're not done, okay, uh, working from our uh, innermost, innermost parentheses. So here, 2 times 2, there's nothing uh, more to do than just multiply those numbers, so that's pretty easy. So 2 times 2 is 4, all right? So you can see I have negative 3 times 4. I have these parentheses here divided by negative 12, 
Then I have this fraction stuff in the denominator. So this is, uh, you know, going pretty good so far. All right, let's go ahead and finish up what's in this parentheses. So negative 3 times 4, last time I checked, is a negative 12. So I'm going to have negative 12 divided by negative 12, and that's what I have down here. And notice I'm really just focusing so far on the numerator. But at this point, I'm like, okay, I'm feeling pretty good about this. Um, let's take a look at what we can uh, simplify now. So let's finish up the numerator because it's really easy to do. Uh, anything divided by itself, negative 12 divided by negative 12, so anything divided by itself is going to be a positive 1, and that's what I have right here. So uh, the numerator uh, came out to be a positive 1. So now I have to deal with this uh, denominator, so 1 half minus 1, okay? So let's go ahead and do that math over here. So 1 half, what's the lowest common denominator, LCD? The LCD is 2, so let's change 1 such that it has a lowest common denominator of 2, or a denominator of 2, so that's 2 over 2. Okay, so hopefully you know how to deal with fractions. So I have 1 half minus 2 over 2. Now I've got to be very careful here. When I subtract the numerators, this is going to be a negative 1 half. Okay, negative 1 half, not a positive 1 half, because here, let's just... Uh, be very, very clear about this. So here I'm going to have the LCD, which is 2, and now I'm subtracting. So that's going to be 1 minus 2, which is 1 plus a negative 2. So this is going to be negative 1 half. So uh, just interested to see how many of you out there made that little mistake and maybe put a positive 1 half. Uh, that's another common place where students can make an error. All right, so at this point, our numerator is a positive 1. Our denominator is a uh, negative one-half. And now we can go ahead and deal with this complex fraction. So this is a positive one divided by, that's what this fraction bar, fraction bar says, positive one divided by this number. So let's just go ahead and write it out this way. Positive one divided by negative one-half. So again, I'm going to have to know how to deal with fractions. So this is going to be, this division is going to turn into multiplication and I need to flip this fraction to the right. So negative 1 half, when I flip it upside down, it's negative 2. Negative 2 over 1, which is the same thing as negative 2. And 1 times negative 2 is a negative 2. So that is the final answer. Now, how many of you out there got that problem right? Well, if you did get that right, let me go ahead and give you a nice happy face with the good old 1982 Mohawk, um, an A+. Plus and a few stars to make you feel extra special. Nice job. Uh, you know, if you made an error, all right, if you got, let's say, the majority of the steps correct, but you made an error in any particular place, well, listen, nice job. I'd rather you make a mistake uh, with, you know, with me going through this problem so you don't make a mistake on your quizzes and tests, okay? But don't feel bad about making an error in math, all right? That, that's just part of learning. However, uh, what you want to do is learn from your mistakes. You don't want to keep making the same error over and over and over um, because, you know, then you're not going to be successful in mathematics. So, you know, never feel bad about um, getting a problem wrong. What you need to do is ask yourself, why did I get that wrong? And how do you find the answer to that question? Well, if you have all your work, you know, written out nice and neat, you can go to your teacher and your teacher can say, oh, you did this part of the problem incorrectly. Or... You know, you can just uh, look at your own work and figure it out. But if you're sloppy and, you know, you don't write out all the steps, it's impossible to determine what you know and don't know. But anyways, hopefully this problem, you know, uh, you know, strengthen your understanding of the order of operations. Hopefully you were part of that 25%. But if you weren't, you will be the next time. But um, anyways, if this video helps you out in some small way, please consider smashing that like button. That helps me out tremendously. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, Hopefully you'll consider uh, subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus math videos, basic to advanced mathematics. So my job, my passion, my uh, goal is to try to teach math in a clear and understandable way. So please take advantage of all the content that I've posted and I will post, but my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.